Here are a few quick tips on connecting and setting up your Ricoh Theta Z1. First of all, you definitely want to use a 360 grade tripod. You don't need a prosumer level tripod like you would use for the Pro 2 or Pro 3 cameras. It's just unnecessary. So this is the tripod I really like to use when using a 360 camera. I will line up the head here, open up all four, just extend that. I don't need to extend it all the way and then open up the base. How much to open up the base? Definitely don't want to open it up all the way. Just because you have a wider stance does not mean that the tripod will be more stable. In fact, just the opposite, it makes the center post of this tripod a lot longer, which will make it less stable. So bring that up a little bit. And what I like to do is have the legs at about 45 degrees. If, however, I am shooting a multi-story property, I'll set the tripod on a stair and make sure that the legs are not wider than any one of the stairs. So just set that up accordingly, tighten that down, and you're good to go. Now, as far as the height goes, I'll adjust this top one a little further down so that the top plate is at about four feet, just a little over four feet, something like that. That way, once I connect the camera, the lens is at about four and a half feet. And that's a really good place to be for most promote use cases when shooting residential and commercial real estate. If your use case is different and you need the height of the camera to be anything other than four and a half feet, go for it by all means. It certainly doesn't change the way you go about scanning the property or facility. It's just gonna change your visitor's experience and what they see as they're walking through the property. And it's definitely something that you wanna keep in mind. So now I'll go ahead and take the camera, thread that on top here. Make sure that's pretty tight. Take the cap off. Just press and hold the power button to turn the camera on. Once you see the blue light blinking in the front, you know the camera is booting up. Now connecting to the camera is really quite simple. I just do it the same way I connect to a Pro 2. I'll go into settings, look for the camera's Wi-Fi signal. If the Wi-Fi signal doesn't come up, I can check here. I see that the Wi-Fi icon is not blinking yet. So what I'll do is go to the side of the camera. There's a little Wi-Fi button right here. Just tap that. Now the Wi-Fi icon is blinking. My mobile device is scanning for all available networks. And once it finds the Ricoh Theta, which is named Theta and the camera serial number, I'll just tap that. It'll ask me for the password. Now the password for Ricoh Theta cameras is the numbers of the serial number. So anything after the letter N up here at the top, that's the password for this camera. So let's see, 14010001. I get that blue check mark. I know that the two are communicating. This is connected to the Wi-Fi signal the camera is producing. It also says no internet connection, and that's gonna happen. That's totally fine. The camera itself is not connected to the internet, and I don't need it to be. The phone or my mobile device is connected to the camera, and therefore I have that blue check mark. So I'm fine. Don't worry about that. I can go into my Matterport app, get a new job. Now this will happen from time to time, so I'm glad it happened right here so I can show you what to do. The camera button says iPhone. The Matterport app is not recognizing the camera, even though in my settings, you can see that the two are communicating. It is connected to the camera's Wi-Fi signal. So what I'll do is very simple. Just kill the Matterport app. Go back in there. Go back into the model I created. And now you can see it says Ricoh Theta Z1. That's it. Now I know the app sees the camera and I can go ahead and start scanning.